<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. And I'm being joined here tonight by Bradley, aka Sergeant, and Yo. Chris. How are you guys doing tonight? What's up? Hanging out. Uh, just got off of work, so I'm doing much better now, except for the fact that they that Hollywood's ruining another one of my favorite comic book series. We'll get into that in just a second. <laughs> uh, we will be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that we've taken a, a week and a half break off the podcast. Uh, Schedule-wise, has been kind of difficult with my work schedule being switched up and then trying to find a new compatible time. So a uh, quick shout-out to Sarge and Chris for making this work tonight. Um, and we're glad to be back. We're trying to keep this going with as few breaks as possible. Uh, sorry, so go ahead. Uh, so what What exactly, what childhood memory is being destroyed as we know it? Well, I mean, I've always, like, the only DC comic books I like are Batman related. And there's a new Batwoman movie coming out that I saw a trailer for today that looks like it's geared to go the same route as Miss Marvel and make me hate it because the premise is men don't matter and anything a man can do a woman can do better full disclosure um i did end up watching the trailer prior to us recording this podcast because sarge didn't yeah, mention did it too. um me and chris both watched it and i gotta say the main actor although she is a female looks exactly like the youtuber james charles <laughs> she looks like justin bieber <laughs> yes she does a more distinguished well, that's justin do, bieber turn her into a lesbian <laughs> yeah and it's it's not Commissioner it's Gordon's like daughter anymore, now. and uh, it's just. Mm. And, in her, uh, and in her last line in the trailer, and I think it's a show, by the way, on the CW. It's going to be on CW probably if it's a show. Yeah, it is. Which means I'll never watch it again anyway, so. But the last line in the trailer is, I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. After she stole everything from Batman's uh, Batman's identity, literally his suit. She takes yeah. his suit. She takes his cave. She takes his mansion. I'm not going to let anyone know that a man did this. It's going to be a woman's job. Like the, the iconic, the that. iconic thing. There's two iconic things in DC Comics. There's Superman, and there's Batman. Batman is the world's greatest detective. He's great at everything. He has an answer for everything. He has these awesome suits that just are plot armor to the nth degree. He has a suit specifically designed for every occasion, except to fit this woman. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> you know what? I think we're trying to blur the lines too much. Um, you know, kids are, are raised, I mean, you got three daughters, I don't have to tell you, you know, kids are raised saying, you know, hey, whatever a guy can do, a woman can do just as well. And to a certain extent, I mean, that's true. I mean, we see a lot of, you know, single parent households where the mom really does all the work and does everything. But I don't think um, certain things are meant to be, certain lines are meant to be crossed. Not everything a, a woman can do, a guy can do. And similarly, not everything a guy can uh, uh, can do, a woman can do. Um, and forget about fictional characters for the time being, like Batman. Let's apply it to real life. I mean, right now it's super, super popular. There's a big movement going on for uh, transgender athletes. Um, I was re listening to a podcast recently, a Joe Rogan podcast, where he had um, the host of, I don't know if you've seen the show before, but Adam Ruins Everything. I think the main actor's name is Adam Conover. I haven't seen it. He comes on the Joe Rogan podcast um, saying that it's okay for transgender men, meaning men who no longer want to be men and want to become women, it's okay for transgender men to participate in women's competitive activities. Uh, and then Joe Rogan's like, no, it's not okay. And he pointed out a recent example where a guy without any kind of training whatsoever joined a woman's weightlifting competition and shattered every record they had for the last couple of decades. I well, yeah, I mean, there was, 
there was that thing where Joe Rogan talks about all the time, where this transgender guy went to was in the MMA and he was terrible, and then he went to he turned himself into a woman and just creamed these women. Yeah, just creamed them yeah, because his physiology right. is still that of a man, where right. his bone structure is harder, his muscle structure is harder. It's it's physio it's a physiological difference. Yeah. You can you can cut whatever you want off and turn it into whatever you want. You're still genetically a guy. Exactly. But but you're intolerant if you say that. Well, well you know, I guess science people, is intolerant then. Yeah, people have have gone away from science and everything factual, you know. Um who's the uh the Kardashian, the father, the Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, whoever? He or Oh she, yeah. He or she could do whatever they want to do with their body, but at the end of the day, when they get a blood test done, that blood's going to reveal that that's that's a XX chromosome, meaning that's a man. No matter what you do, it's in your DNA. You are a man. So it's not going to change it. But, you know, like I said, live and let live. That's my thing. But you can do with your body are, whatever you want, as long as it doesn't impede on other people. Right, and in this case, it kind of does. Uh, not so much the Batman the, or the uh, Batwoman thing, because you know we don't, you know, we don't have to watch it. And let's be honest, it's not going to be any competition to the real Batman movie at all. You know, just like the WNBA is no competition with the NBA. I mean, both sports, in my opinion, are equally as dead as one another <laughs> um i don't know i just don't think that i think it, right now we live in a time where it's cool to have blurred lines and i mean staying i can, I can see that it's, is no longer a thing but like like we were talking about if you're a guy i'm gonna say pretending because you weren't born uh, you weren't born a woman mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want to your body you're still genetically a man Right. Um, if you're in a comp if you're in a competitive sport, that like, that gives you an edge. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. Exactly. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. I'm right there with you. What gives you the right to jump into a sport without having any kind of proper training and absolutely crush their records? And then you're considered brave for it. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> What did you do that was so brave? You changed your physiology to make yourself look like the opposite sex so that you could dominate their sport. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> well, that's because they couldn't win as the other gender, so they have to be the new gender to win, you know? And here's the thing. like People are going to listen to us talking about this, and you know they're going to be like, oh, they're uh, – what, what is it? Are we xenophobes now because we're talking about this or Trans something like that? Transphobic. transphobic. I'm not transphobic. You I can do whatever I'm you want. I'm pretty sure one of the people in the building I work in, you know, is at one point was a man and now is a woman. And, you know, every morning I, I, I wave to him or her and we're good to go. I mean, I, I don't have any kind of malice or any kind of no. evil thoughts toward that person. They're doing. They're showing up to work just like I am. Are you Are you watching your pronouns? Um, <laughs> I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. That's a my thing. thing. Is is you know I think people should have the right to do what they want, but I don't like where it's like you. I don't need, like to be forced. Yeah, I don't like this ramrodded down your throat that. Oh, you need to celebrate that I am transgender. Right. I don't have you to know. celebrate anything. I can celebrate you as a person and being a human being, but why do I have to celebrate you, your courageousness for deciding that you don't like the gender you were born with? I don't, I, I don't subscribe to that. And that's not PC, so I guess I'm a intolerant bigot. That's true. You are one. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean I I get that people want to feel special if if you're not happy with the way things are do what you need to do to make yourself happy but don't make it infringe on somebody else's happiness right you know what I mean 
I mean, these poor girls, they, they practice all year for this competitive um, lifting event. And yeah, there is a community of women out there, which that's awesome that they train all year long. And they're huge, like jacked women. And they participate in this. And for this guy to not have any kind of formal prep preparation at all, didn't put the time in the gym, didn't put any kind of training time, no, no, uh, no effort, just to show up and win and win by a lot. Uh, that I have a problem with that. That at that point you are infringing on other people's happiness and their ability to uh, uh, to thrive. It's like. They made they made their whole life about training for something, and because you're physiologically advantaged in that specific area, that gives you an edge to where you can you can just smash every record they have. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that if I picked a fight with China in her prime, I was going to win. No, that's not going to happen. She's going to whoop my oh, ass. China, the uh, the wrestler. That I'm, yeah, that, I think that, that reference now, almost got away from me. Um, or like, I'm not, not going to go pick a fight with Ronda Rousey because she's going to whoop wait, my wait, ass. Back up. You said she's dead? China's dead? Yeah, I, think, I think China's dead. What? Yeah, yep, I think she, she died, died a while ago. Whoa. See, I grew up watching wrestling. I put it away after I grew up, but like, that was one, she was one of the wrestlers I remember when I was a kid. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, she, she even did porno for a while. Oh, God. <laughs> she did. Moving along. <laughs> <laughs> Devil um, R will be searching that later. No, I'm kidding. Uh, she no, was, I won't. She was, I had, I had a lot of admiration <laughs> for China in a way. Not, I, did, I thought she was ugly, but that's just me. I don't get into women who oh. are like super jacked. But um, she's the only female wrestler that I could think of that in her wrestling career, she had to wrestle two male wrestlers and she still won Mm. like even though it's all scripted that's still pretty impressive that she could do those things to grown-ass men who are trained weightlifters and stuff like that yeah well the reason she died was a drug overdose overdose of alcohol combined with diazepam norzepam oxycodone oxymorphine and That'll she do had it. a rough life too, though. A Pam or yeah. whatever. So when yeah. you take six drugs and on top of the alcohol, you're gone. You know the whole athletic thing. Like people juiced a lot back in the day. People are juicing today. I mean, just the other day I saw on the internet. I don't know if you guys remember, um, famous bodybuilder uh, C. T. Fletcher. No. Huge, like huge, no, but I'll huge, Google him. Huge muscular dude. And uh, recently had some heart problems. I think he had like three heart attacks. And he, he flat out says it, man. He's like, hey, stay away from the juice because that's what he was doing. He comes out and says, man. Um, and now he's super skinny and lost all his muscle definition. And he just focused on, you know, living out the best 15, 20 years or whatever he's got left in his life, you know, because that... uh. That takes a lot out of you, and a lot of these people who compete physically, um, I'm sure you see them. I, I see them in the gym all the time. You can definitely tell someone that's naturally gained from someone who's juicing. Um, well, I mean, if your testicles have shrunk up in your stomach, you're probably juicing. Well, I, I can't tell that by looking at someone, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Oh, you know you check out the Speedos. All righty. <laughs> okay. Have your last so Double, like, R, like, double have, R, we know you naturally gain because of the uh, quantities of food you eat. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> give you this. I'll give you this example of when it would when it's when I think it's okay for a transgender man to compete with a with a straight up woman. Mm-hmm. Shooting competitions. There is no part of a man's physiology that gives them an edge over a woman in shooting. Yeah, that's all training. I agree. I could go like, what was it? Uh, there was a set of twin girls that were Olympic shooting champions for like two or three sets of Olympics. Mm-hmm. 
and that's awesome. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna teach my girls how to shoot as soon as Don't I think they're wrong, old man. enough to be able to hold a gun. There there's women and, and be your, responsible your daughters, with it. Your daughters may grow up to be one of them. There are women out there that can do a lot of things better than men. Um, I mean, just look at any hospital. Look at the number of doctors. The chances are, if you're running to a doctor in a hallway at a hospital, it's going to be a female. It's amazing what kind of tangent this went on from Batman. There, well, I mean, <laughs> we're still talking about like gender issues. I mean, yeah. Um, the the show is attempting to push a narrative, uh, an underlying narrative. You know, calling it Batwoman. Um, I mean, Batwoman's an actual character. But right, I get that. Is. They just I get that. butchered the character to make to push an agenda. Like Barbara Gordon as Batwoman has a whole history. The most and popular they... Batman comic series was the Killing Joke. They even made they made an animated movie out of it that was awesome. And the whole premise of that was Joker somehow finds out where Commissioner Gordon lives, mm-hmm. he knocks on the door. Barbara Gordon answers the door. He shoots her in the gut through her spinal cord. Yep. And she's paralyzed from the waist down. She's no longer Batwoman anymore. Now she's Oracle. She's like yeah. Batman's accomplice, I guess you'd call it, where she she's like his eyes in the sky. But it's just it's just crazy that they did they did that to to Batwoman. It's like you could have made a Batwoman movie or TV series, and made it good. Instead, you push an agenda. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> it, just, it just breaks my heart. So, um, switching gears a little bit here, I mean, season-wise, um, we're a few months away from the NFL, but more importantly, in my opinion, more importantly, this matters to me more than football, is that summer's almost here. Um, well, for you and I, maybe not so much Chris, but for you and I, the weather we're getting pretty much is summer esque. Do you guys have any kind of summer plans or things you're looking forward to uh, for the summer? I'm heading to New York in June. I don't have any major plans yet. Okay. Yeah, we're heading up there for my brother in law's birthday slash Father's Day thing. Okay. Because his birthday falls on the same day as Father's Day, I think. Cool. I'm actually going to oh. hopefully make a trip to Chicago. Um, the first or second week of June, so um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. You know, I've I live 1,500 miles away from family, and they come out here and visit every now and again. But um, being able to go out there is different, um, and get to see family, call up friends. You know, it's almost like you live there again. But I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. What about you, Chris? Uh. Not sure yet. Probably head to the beach at some point. Uh, which beach? Um, Virginia Beach? <clears throat> uh, Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Has a house there. Oh, you're going down through... You're going to cross right through my neck of the woods. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're going right straight through where I live. Are you guys going to do a meetup? I mean, we could if he wants to, but I'm yeah, pretty well, sure he just wants to... Out. Hey, man, I need a reason to use my air, air points. My air miles. Just let me know when you're coming. Sounds good. Look at that. We just we just made an impromptu meetup just like that. That's pretty cool. We've been talking about doing this for months. We have, but it was more or less like you guys come to Vegas or I come out there, you know, that kind of thing. But it'd be cool if our paths crossed in that way. That'd be really yeah. awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. And besides... I've I've since the first time we talked about it, I've been looking forward to like grilling out and just roughing it out there with you guys. You know. Listen, I don't live in a cabin in the woods. I live in the suburbs, all right. <laughs> we can still rough it. <laughs> you got a smoker, don't you? No. I have we, a grill. We can make one. There we go. We will make we a go. barbecue. We can we can make a smoker if we if as long as you provide the, the equipment for it. I will provide, how about this? I will get the meats that we need. Chris is going to help fund whatever. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not going to put you on the, on the hook for that, Chris. I can, I can fund what? To fund the project <laughs> of building the grill. All you got to do is buy a couple barrels and. Come on, man. We're roughing it, Chris. Pipes. 
Do your part. <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll fund something. <laughs> I'll fund a beer. But yeah, I mean, I'm... honestly though, if you guys came down here or anywhere near here, we could meet up and do something. Even if it's you know, go get something to eat, and chill out for a little bit. That sounds a heck of a lot better than what Chris had planned. Because uh, I was going to go out there to visit him, but it, it, it this in no way, what he told me, in no way changed my plans. What happened was my work schedule changed. But the plan was for me to go out there, and he was going to take me to a baseball game of all places. Uh, I said that because I know you don't like baseball. You're a troll. And I, I responded with, <laughs> yeah, and then we can do sushi dinner, and you can pay for it. Yeah, with the 250 damn pieces of sushi we want to eat. Listen. Okay, let's see. La- he's, wonder he's a growing boy. I put you on a diet. First of all, I'm not in the <laughs> FBI, and I never was on a mandated diet. But here's oh, the thing. That's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, well, we're going to cut back the streaming schedule because I have to go to the gym. <laughs> what the hell do you think that was for? <laughs> You're a troll. You're such a troll. No, it's not a troll. It's called a fact finding truth. I would uh I would not quit my day job if I were you. Your uh investigative days are are still a very, very long time away. Wrong. But anyways. What else? No, oh, let's let's keep going. Go ahead. <laughs> Lead the charge. Go ahead, Sarge. Did we, oh, we lost Sarge, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I'm back. Okay, he's back. Yeah, so we went to the north. We went to the North Carolina State Fair in Raleigh this wait, weekend. Wait, 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 wait! You 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 can't just continue there. We we lost you for a good thirty seconds. I said on the subject of summertime activities. Okay, we went to the North Carolina State Fair in Raleigh. With the kids, I we saw this pony riding thing. So I was like, okay, we're going to try and put the kids on the ponies, let them ride. Bianca, my, my blonde-haired little angel, she screamed her head off. Would not touch these horses. Why? Scary? She's just scared. Then Bailey, who loves animals, was fine until the horse moved it. Until the pony moved her head. As soon as that, as soon as it moved and she realized it was alive, she went nuts. She just screamed. Brooke, my other daughter, was fine until it started walking. And she screamed. The first two had to be escorted off and we got our money back. Oh my goodness. It was that bad. So we're walking around and they go to see the animals and stuff and had a good day. Then we come back and we go to the pool. And my child, who was just terrified of a pony that was strapped to a metal bar that went in circles, was terrified of this thing, goes to the edge of the pool and just jumps in. Was it, was it <laughs> cold? No fear whatsoever. Just jumps in. What a savage. Was the water cold? I mean, we were in the pool and we were watching her and she said that she wanted to jump. So we're like, okay, well, try it. See, see if it scares you. She jumped in. Fine. I said, I want to do it again. So I put her back up there. And she did that like for like two hours. That's awesome. Getting out and jumping in. That's they great. love the water, like fish. It's great. And then apparently my wife took them to some kind of store today and they had some kind of frogs or something. And, uh, and they were scared of the frogs? <laughs> no, there was a frog with, with its tongue out. And my daughter goes, froggy's tongue, froggy's tongue. <laughs> so my wife goes, what's the froggy doing? So Bianca and her Baby speak says, "What's the froggy doing?" But it sounds more like, "What the fuck you doing?" <laughs> oh, but she didn't actually say it, though, did she? <laughs> no, she was saying, "What's the froggy doing?" But she it sounded that way. She <laughs> got it on video. It's I, I've probably watched that video twelve times today and laughed every single time. <laughs> That's awesome. It's hilarious. I might actually take it and post it on my channel if if I want my kids on the internet. But I don't. I don't know. I don't think you want them I'll on talk the internet. To my wife. Yeah, but it was it was hilarious. 
Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty funny. So anyway, my boring story's done. That wasn't boring. <laughs> You're talking about kids. No, I, I actually <laughs> found it entertaining. Oh, another thing about kids. Don't ever try to tell a parent how to parent their kids if you don't have kids. Or even if you do. Just mind your own goddamn business. Uh oh. Did what? somebody tell Did you someone you say to something parent? to you? No, it's just like my mother like my mother in law does it all the time. She's always trying to tell us what we're doing wrong about raising the kids. Yeah. It drives me out of the ball. Does she drives me out the, the wall. podcast? No. Well then screw her. I'm just, <laughs> and, I'm just kidding. And, and then um <laughs> Like we'll be in the mall or something. We'll be in the, the like Walmart or something, and the kids will be crying because two year olds do that. They just cry for no reason. Like they want Fruit yeah. Loops or something, and they can't have it, so they start crying. And you'll hear somebody in the background, "Somebody shut that kid up!" And I just want to punch him in the face. Like I have no chill. I just want to punch him in the face. It's like <sighs> they're two. Leave them alone. Let them cry. Let right. Them cry. If it gets yeah. too bad, we take them out of the store anyway. Because yeah, that's the only thing I would, I would say want to listen to it. it. Gets, if it gets to the point where you can't calm them down, then and it rarely gets that bad. Usually, we'll threaten to take them outside and they'll calm down because they know they don't want to go back out to the car, and sit with daddy in the car while daddy's pissed off because he had to go out to the car and can't, can't get his <laughs> flashlights or whatever from Home Depot. Dude, speaking of flashlights, <laughs> I don't know if you guys get those uh, those weekly or monthly mailers. Oh, from Harbor Freight, where they offer free stuff? Yes, dude. Those are I so clutch. I always take those. I have like 12 freaking okay. tape measures from there. <laughs> I, have, I have tape measures. I have flashlights. I Tarps. have um, those magnetic uh, dishes where you can throw odd end parts and screws. Um. Yeah, dude, I'd get, I'd get so much free stuff from them. But actually, now that I think about it, I kind of pay for it because I usually go in there and buy something like detailing uh, towels or something just so I can, you know, spend some money to say that I've earned it. But well, I mean, if you buy Pittsburgh tools, they have a lifetime warranty too. So they do. Yeah, they uh, they sell Pittsburgh tools there. It's sell- like their version of Craftsman, only they're not as good. So you'll you will end up using the <laughs> the, warranty. the warranty on it most likely. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's free replacement, so whatever. <laughs> right. You just take your broken wrench or whatever in there, and they'll give you a new one. Yeah, I, I love them. Uh, I have one not too close away, or not too far away from me. So uh, whenever I get one of those mailers, I'm usually in there the very next day. Um. It's a good store. It is. It is. I, I like them quite a bit. Oh, speaking of that, I had a uh I had a similar issue, you know, with the lifetime warranty type thing where I bought a laptop about last year and it had something with the hard drive was screwy. And I called and they're like, Well, you didn't buy that warranty to cover that. And I said, well, what's it cover? And it said, well, accidental spills and stuff like that. So I said, well, I'll just knock a glass of water over on it then. <laughs> and bring it back to the Best Buy. And and they're like, well, there, I guess. I made it accidental. That. That's funny, but, though, because, like, I went it to. Was like, it was like, what difference does it make, you know? So I, I can spill a glass of water on it, but because the hard drive's effing up, you won't, you know? Yeah, it doesn't make and any sense. When I went to Iraq, I bought a laptop before I went. And my laptop was shot. <laughs> Literally shot. Oh, like... When I got, actually yeah, shot bullet, with like a bullet. Like bullet, yeah. And, um... <laughs> oh, I got I got you. back. I brought it to... I brought it back to Best Buy. I was like, Do, is this something I have to pay for? Are you gonna, are you gonna use the warranty? Like, is that a bullet hole? He's like, yeah. He's like, how did that happen? I was in a firefight on my way through Af- on my way through Iraq. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, I'll replace it." <laughs> <laughs> no questions asked. All right, that's good. Yeah, they didn't even bother. You know, the it's other like thing they told me. Oh, go ahead. 
I mean, what happens if they say, no, we can't replace it? Yeah. I'm going to put that right on the social media. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> I'm giving These guys don't support the troops. Afghanistan, but they won't replace my computer. Yeah. That's good that, that they uh, extended that uh, warranty out to you and um, made an exception for you. I'm happy to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Some places are really cool like that. I I um I have a lot of respect for people who are active duty and former uh servicemen and women. Um you know, usually when I see them out in public, you know, I'll try to like if they're in line behind me, I'll try to, you know, like if we're at a fast food place or something, I'll usually pay for your meal. Or at the very least, just be like, hey, thanks for your service. I think that so goes... So what, what you're saying is every meal when you come to visit is going to be free because you're going to pay for all of my meals? Well, no, I but said, it's only I, fast food. Notice said, that caveat. It's fast I said, food. I said I would pay for all the meats that we cook. So in, in essence, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> but did you catch that little caveat? There's a monetary uh, threshold that he's willing you know what? to pay. It's and here's the pay. thing. I'm such a good guy. I was willing to pay for all of us to eat. But now I'm paying for you and me to eat, Sergeant. Chris is going to get sounds his good. own. That sounds good. That sounds fair. Fine, and I'll get better stuff than you make anyways. Well, I'm not making it. Sarge is making it. I'm just paying for the meat. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> See, we're, we're not even hanging out, and we're already at each other's throats. What's going to happen? What, Speaking when of actually... hanging out, yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna, I downloaded I'm... Monopoly. When are we going to co-stream that? Are we gonna... Oh, yeah. So um, for those of you guys who are probably not aware, um, Sergeant Kicker is also a streamer. Um, yesterday, we had a really fun time streaming, uh, co-streaming uh, Uno. You know, the popular card game you grew up playing as a kid. Yeah, well, it's available at a, as a game on Xbox, and we were streaming it. Man, it's so much fun to play those kind of games with people you know. Um, we're going to do more of that, so um, definitely subscribe to Sergeant Kicker. Uh, I would say Chris, too, but he doesn't have a YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to Sergeant. <laughs> we're on the road to how many subscribers? A thousand? Well, I mean, I've got 50 now, so if I can hit 100, I'll be happy for you know, okay, so remove I, a zero. If I hit call it, by the end of the year, I'll be happy. Call it a hundred. Uh, we're trying to get them monetized on YouTube as well. Um, but overall, we're just we're just having fun. Uh, and upcoming soon, getting back to your original question, uh, we might have to do that Monopoly stream on the weekend sometime. Uh, okay. Um, I know that you usually do other games, but we can do it on. I don't know what you. I'm what your plans to make are for Sunday for this. It's Monopoly. Oh, and by the way, I saw that you did the uh, Take Your Viewers to Work Day stream after I uh, went to bed. Okay, first of all, it's not a I Take Your Viewers. Talking about. He's talking about my recent GTA uh, law enforcement stream. <laughs> oh. It's That's... Take the Viewers to Work. It's, it's, it's basically you in the video game world uh, doing your real job. <laughs> I don't like you, Chris. I really don't. How am I wrong? I really don't like you. <laughs> I, I, I told you this. I told you the story when about my my brother, right? He can't defend himself because somebody's got him cornered in the box. All right, guys, we're looking for a third uh, member of our podcast. Uh, this will be Chris's last. <laughs> <one. So. laughs> when somebody corners with double R in the box, that's his standard go-to: is I hate you or I don't like you. But all seriousness, though, we, we are trying to we're gonna try and get somebody in here for like a a third like a like a guest. We were talking about that before, and yeah, we really want a guest that uh, come on for. But the thing is, you have to be able to contribute to the conversation. This, this isn't just like a hey, I like your streams, right? Uh, what's your favorite football team? Yeah, I mean it's pretty obvious with you and me, you know. Um, you're a big Steelers fan, I'm a big Ravens fan. Technically, we shouldn't even be friends. I um, first started watching your streams so I could troll you. Yeah, and you realize I couldn't be trolled. Oh, you could be trolled. I just decided not to because you were being super nice. Okay. And I, I would feel bad. 
By the way, shout out to Steel Legends. I think I don't think we'd be friends had it not the been for him. The chefs. The chefs. The I actually started watching him after I started watching you because you said something about him, and that's when I started watching him. Yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. He's just a headache to follow on Twitter. I still follow him. It's just like, oh my god, dude! <laughs> he, he posts all he's day long. Posting about potential draft picks, like the first week of January. It's like, dude, please chill out. Please, chill. like the season's not even over. <laughs> the Super Bowl still to come. You're talking about draft picks, really? I like, I like his enthusiasm, though. I do like his enthusiasm. I can't, I can't knock him for that. <laughs> Well, you even have the same haircut on your character in this game. Oh, <laughs> He's so annoying. This is this is how committed Chris is to the to the podcast. He's watching videos while we're doing the podcast. Yeah. No, I I clicked on his video <laughs> to give him another view. I'm helping him out, and I like the video, so he has Chris, an even dozen. I really Chris is the reason we that. need somebody to come in. <laughs> or I could give it a thumbs down and then harm your monetization, but I didn't want I want to give that. our friendship a thumbs down. How about that, Chris? <laughs> I mean, he is a baseball fan, so it only makes sense. Oh, that's true. Dang, you got me <laughs> Who there. lost again? Oh, jeez, here we go. Why did you bring up Christ, baseball? There are nine games out of the first place. <sighs> okay, nobody cares about baseball. And nine games place. under five hundred. How's the Redskins looking right now? I heard I saw I saw somebody got injured in practice. Oh yeah, Ruben Foster is out for the season because of our dog shit medical staff. <laughs> Wait, why is it their fault he got injured? <laughs> because he he tore his ACL. Because of the conditioning right? coach, I'd fire him. Oh my god, the season hasn't even started yet, and he's already firing people. <laughs> You make no sense, bro. I'm sorry. You just want to fire everybody. That's that's your that's your gig. That's really no surprise though. He's like the Donald Trump of sports fans. He is. He, he... Well, see, I support the president. I'm sorry you don't. Excuse me. I, I do support I, the I do president. Support him. <laughs> Isn't that funny how he tried to turn that around on us real quick? Yeah, it's, it's his way of it's his way of being him. Yeah, that's true. Chris, could you not be yourself? Thanks. <laughs> I just keep it real. We, we like you better when you're not yourself. You I keep, keep it. Do you real. keep it real or do you keep it real? Please stop. <laughs> oh God, I, I, I don't think I'm woke enough for this conversation. <laughs> Where's Jax? We need to get Jax in here. Oh He's my woke. God. He wants to make sure the whole world gets woke before woke is a thing. And by the way, that was a heck of a that last podcast we did was uh, you got pretty riled up. I, I don't think uh, I've seen you like that and I was not expecting that at all. Uh, it happens. It happens, yeah. You hit your breaking point, you know. I feel I feel very strongly about game series that I like getting ruined by SJW crap. crap. Yeah. But you, at the been, same time, it's not the whole game. It's just the one ending, and it kind of ruined the the taste of the game, really, for me. Yeah. Have you been back to the game ever since? Yeah, I've played it a couple of times. Nowhere near what it was, though. I mean, I don't know. That ending kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, I hear you, man. I uh, definitely would, yeah. I mean, like I said, that on that last podcast is people want to watch TV, play video games to escape and unwind from the bullshit of the world around them. And then it's ramrodded right back in their face with political jabs in a TV show or, you know, being woke in a video game. And it's annoying. It is. It's very annoying. That's why I still haven't watched Miss Marvel yet. <laughs> and I probably won't. I probably will never watch that movie. If I do, it'll be pirated somewhere. Funny how it takes one or two incidents like that to, uh, I don't want to say jade us, but to leave a bad taste in our mouths, just to be like, you know what, I don't want to have anything to do with that. 
I have nothing against a female lead in a movie. I don't either. Like, if Star Wars wasn't the train wreck that Star Wars was, then I would be all for Ray, whatever her name is, or as everybody else seems to call her, Mary Sue, because everything gets handed to her. Yeah. They had an entire movie of Luke Skywalker learning to use the Force. This chick gets one sword, one light sword fight, and it's just she knows how to do it. It's like she's the a, Force. She's oh a, yeah, I have that. She's an instant legend, day one. And then they completely ruin, you know, Mark Hamill's character in Star Wars, and Mark Hamill's even the 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 face of Star Wars. Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, comes out and continuously bashes the movie series because they've ruined it so bad. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, uh, I haven't watched really any Star Wars. I haven't seen any, like, really anything that's popular to watch. I, I stay away from because I know it's not good. It's all hype. Like Game of Thrones, I haven't seen a single episode of that. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think okay. movies and shows are as good today as they were during uh, my younger years. In my opinion. Like, Star Wars is... You have to go way out of the limb to, to, you know, get into it like that. But, I mean, it, it's... It's this whole this whole environment in in entertainment now is just sickening. Right. I don't mind having strong female characters. I don't mind if a character in a movie's gay. I, I don't care. Just don't try to ramrod it down my throat. <laughs> as Chris, but, you know but, what I mean? As Chris so but why do they, says. But why do they have to... My point is, is why do they have to explore... We're watching an action movie. You know, why do we have to explore the character's preference in the bedroom? I don't know. I want to watch them fight sense. and kill people and get captured and escape. You know, I don't want to watch them make out and wake up. And I don't care if their partner's heterosexual, homosexual. I don't care for them in the bedroom. You know, if I want to see people in the bed, I'll go on the internet and find, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go spend $20. I'm not going to go spend $20 to see a movie to watch a sex scene. There's plenty of that on the internet for free. <laughs> what a legend. You are an absolute legend, Chris. No, guys. Well, am I wrong? Sorry. No, yeah. you're not. Come I mean, seriously. Time. Seriously. What the hell? But, what um, is... I don't know. I think, I think the progressives are taking over TV. Things are going to change in that direction. A lot of things are going to change in that direction. We just have to kind of take it on the chin and move on. You know, one of those deals. Yeah, pretty if you don't, if you don't pretty like soon it, it's going to be taken on the chin, literally. Okay. On that note, <laughs> uh, that'll do it for this week's podcast. Uh, this was episode seven of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully, uh, we don't have to take too many more breaks. I know June is going to be a big vacation month for me and Sarge, maybe even Chris, who knows. But we're going to try yeah. to get them out to you guys as often as possible. Please bear with us. Uh, see it's you guys the, next time. For the first weekend or the second weekend in June. I won't be able to record. Yeah, likewise. I'll be in New York. Likewise. Um, so we will see you guys next time for episode eight of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. This is myself, Raining Ravens, Chris, and Sergeant Kicker checking out. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Um, we will see if you like guys. to watch people be bad at games, you'll like my channel. There you go. I'm not great at games either. So subscribe to me too if you can. <laughs> see you guys next time.